How are you now? It's James here, brought to you by the Australian Mutual Funds Exchange. It's the Theory of Thing Investment Podcast. You're going to get that right. My name is James Wheeler, Investment Manager, and a, revised, uh, a, a reminder a reminder that all generals are advice in nature. I'm going to get that right as well one day. Um, mate, speak to an advisor about your needs. Don't, don't forget to mark well. I'm joined by Heath Moss of HLN Investments. Heath, how are you now? Very well, mate. Doing better than you are by the sounds of it. <laughs> Shut up. Um, no, it's going to be okay, mate. Don't worry about it. Look, hey, look, it's, been a, it's been an absolutely boring week. Good thing we've got nothing to talk about. Boring um, nothing week? Going what on in, nothing going what on. What are you living market. on? What are you living on? Nothing, go, nothing going on in the finals last week. Nothing going on in anything. Um, nothing going on in Japan. Um, mate, can you can you give us some sort of a thing? Oh, actually, hang on a minute. Yes, as I, as I mentioned. This podcast is brought to you by the Australian Mutual Funds Exchange. It's going to be a quick one. We've got 15 minutes here of recording time, and then we've got to get on with our lives. Um, the drinking game for this week, <laughs> the words of the week on the drinking game, on the uh, on the finance drinking game, uh, route, routed and ousted. Um, <laughs> um, routed bond and market, ousted. Bond market routed and US Speaker of the House ousted. Uh, you the can get Gathie rousted ousted. as well if you really want to. Um, uh, mate, I'll tell you what, I got in today. Got in today. Got in today to the office. I'm joined. I'm, I'm from the city office today. Um, I'm fortunate that I've got a city office. I get to keep one here. And you know, a little bit late from the buses. A little bit of family stuff. Get in. Five minutes coffee time. A little bit of productivity. Building evacuation outside, all the way around to Martin Place. Like you can't. You can't. You can't just tell them to sort off. And I'm just saying here, you've got to actually no. be a part of it. Um, even though I'm just sort of working here in my own little place. Anyway, I get back in. I've had about I've had about ten minutes net total time of actually working time. Commercial real estate can go and screw off to uh, to get a little bit that way. Well, uh, it. what is it? Uh, commercial <laughs> real estate, commercial real estate vacancies worldwide are about what thirty percent at the moment. Um, Pre pandemic, yeah. it was five. So we we all know the state. We all know about that debt rolling over. Um, uh, yeah, there's there's a bit of trouble on the horizon still to come, I think, there. Yeah. Now, speaking of trouble on the horizon, I had this up a second ago, is the, mate, free wheeling coming in here. Look at this Look at this photo of look us from the, I'm back from the farm uh, or the beach house, whatever it is you want to say. That, can you see that there? Yep, yep. Just yeah. hanging on that, cat. <laughs> oh, no, the hey. beach house. Oh, yeah, wow. look at that. Is that smoke? Look at that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. geez. Jeez, Stockhead love a bit of an ad. That's that's the fires that were down there at uh, East in East Gippsland. They were coming in from the west. So that's a view from the beach house there. That was mm. that was scary. It's going to get worse now. It keeps you in mind. There's a segue here that before the uh, before the big issues sort of start, make sure that you are prepared, that you have a plan, and that you're ready to put it into place. Now, the metaphor for that is not just necessarily with regards to bushfire preparedness, but also with regards to what you're going to do in your portfolio when the 10 year eventually hits 5%, which is something that I suggested may happen, it should happen to the market. Now that it is happening, it seems like maybe there's not as much of a crazy panic around as there was anticipated to be, that rates are up to this sort of normal level. My reasoning behind it back then, and I'm not, 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 not crowing and not saying I called it, I was just saying it needs to be about there because it means that as advisors, it does mean, and, and and as portfolio managers and as super fund holders and everyone who does what they need to do, it does mean that you can actually allocate your risk in a more sensible level as opposed to having mm. to take bigger punts on stupider things. And we saw what, what mm. those stupid things were. Um, I'm still holding some of those stupid things and I don't think I'm ever going to get uh, be able to get out of them. But it does mean that that you can. So portfolio allocation is now much easier theoretically to do so with, with rates in the safest assets in the world much higher However, we are seeing that there is um, a severe route drink in various parts and various assets that are doing it. I still hold firm to my to my theory and the global X theory as well that um, the big the mega tech doesn't really respond as much as they should to uh, that raising rates because of that discounted cash flow thing that should be. They don't do what the textbooks say that they do. You're going to get a really big chance to to pick up some of those stocks at big thick lines wherever they are we don't have any charts here Heath mate do you want to give us a quick overview of what else is going on in the market apart from uh well you know what tell us about what's going on in yields hit it yeah mate that's that's what it's all about this week is yields they they really took off over the last last week since we last uh spoke uh, the 10 year in the US especially the long dated yields I'll, I'll say duration is the theme 
Um, the 10 year hit uh, about 4.8. Now that's up, uh, I reckon, 30 basis points in about a week. Um, it's now settled back down to 4.7 due to some uh, softer data overnight. Uh, sh- the uh, the shorter end of the stick, the two years are around about where they were, about five five percent at the moment. So that inversion is really shortening. It's down to about you know 30 30 bips there. Um, that was over 100 bips about three months ago. So we're seeing a real shortening there, and we- we've seen it here in Australia. We've seen the 10 year really take off here too. It's about 4.6 percent at the moment. Did hit a high of 4.7 percent. So. Um, that's the story yeah. of the week, and that's got equities a little bit jittery. The SP, uh, S uh, S and P five hundred down about half percent. Nasdaq's up 0.4 percent though, um, so a little bit of recovery there. But the Australian market, the SJO, down two point two percent. It really hit us hard here. Um, those yields spiking uh, and whatnot. So um, that's yeah. basically the story well, of the week. We saw oil come off big time last night. Um, yeah. with they they saw a uh, a gasoline build, so not an oil inventory build, but a gasoline build of six point five million barrels. So a big build there. So there's concerns about demand, you know, higher prices squashing demand, which you know, right. oil whilst it's inflationary, it's also deflationary because you know if you're you're having to fill the car up to go on holidays and it's a uh, you know a couple of bucks extra a, a, a gallon or whatever. Then um, yeah. you may be like, well, maybe we'll stay home this uh, this time around and not to go on those Christmas holidays or whatever it is. So, uh, yeah. oils oils really uh, come off a bit. It's down to about 80, 86, I think. Yeah, you could go for yeah. it, Jim. Um, yep. th- th- there's there's two arguments here. First off, do you want to be a hero in oil? It's so funny the number of people that were like, you know, oil's going to go a hundred. Oil's going to oil's going to smash through. There's also some things out of Russia on diesel. Too, but I mean, that, let's not go too far into it because we want to make it a quick podcast. So we don't want to make it the oil podcast. But this is US real personal spending for August, mm-hmm. showing that there is still strength. And this has been a big part of what's been going on. There's still strength in the US economy. Um, yep. That, um, you know, that, that this is through Daily Shot um, and it's on the screen here, showing that the US personal spending, US real personal spending still continues to go up. And then last night you're hearing, oh, well, demand is, is coming off. Because of this, I'm just like, you know what? Which it's got to be one. It's going to be it's got to be one or the other, or sort of some sort of blend of both between the two. Uh, mm-hmm. I still hold firm that the U.S. consumer is is and has been the most stubborn mofo of any of this situation, and okay. they will continue to do so. Sixty, I think I'm allowed to say that. Sixty something mm-hmm. percent of U.S. GDP is the U.S. consumer. Globally speaking, it's about fifteen percent of global GDP. Last time I checked based on those mathematics, they have stubbornly managed to continue to bullishly spend their way through this. I think that they will continue to do so. Any weakness in the oil price, any any weakness in gas prices means that they're back on the road and back doing what they're doing and they don't really care. And you've got the fact that, here we go, next bit, with the craziness, the GOP has just basically committed suicide, um, not to make a joke of, of that situation, but... They are, they are cutting their own heads off, those guys, um, in what they're doing over there. Strengthens the Democrats. Biden, more debt relief. Biden, more inflationary pressures. Not going to do much for the oil price as well, based on, on where the Democrats are. Okay, play that. Do, do. Then, I suppose you're going to get those two. So you're going to get you're going to get a debt relief, which then adds to more consumer ability. But then you're going to have higher prices because Biden's an idiot when it comes to the SPR and also when it comes to renewables. So more of the, more of the do, same. I've got no, I've got no point of view. Do any of those bills get through though, um, especially with McCarthy gone now? Um, it's going to make uh, things yeah. a little bit uh, a little bit everything tougher. Just, everything I mean, just stagnates, hey? Yeah. We've got about 45 days until the next uh, sh- possible shutdown. They uh, averted it for 45 days. McCarthy yeah. is gone. It looks like they could go into this with no speaker. Um, and, yeah, none of those bills, I mean, there's a there's a small group, group of Republicans that are really pushing hard for some tough cuts in those bills, um, and I think right, yeah. rightly so. I mean, the government should be cutting um, spending and not running these huge deficits. Um, and, uh, you know, it could – because if, if they can't come to an agreement of 45 days, then, you know, the economy shuts down or the, the, the government shuts down and – Businesses stop spending because they, everything becomes so uncertain. And they sit on their hands and go, okay, we'll wait to see if there's a little bit more certainty. Um, now, well, it's more than likely well, that, you know, 11th hour again, we get another agreement and yada, yada, yada. 
but um, that that risk hangs over the market for a while. And uh, whilst those uh, yields are relatively really high, um, uh, real yields are, are going much higher as well. Um, then uh, you know I can't see a bullish um, uh, bullish narrative for the market in the short term. And yeah, I'm not, we're heading I'm, into I'm, Q, Q3 earnings next week. However, statistically speaking, here is the. I'm yeah, just going off my note here. This is very handy. The S and P 500 average returns by the month and their standard deviations. Thank you to Scott Helsting of Global X again. I just saw this on his LinkedIn profile, but you can get this from pretty much a thousand places. I've got it. September is yep. always crappy, um, or sorry, historically cra crappy, going back to 1950 on average, and this is up here. October is traditionally slightly less crappy, with about a 1% average return for the S&P 500, mm -hmm. but it swings wildly with its standard deviations going out anywhere between 6% up and 4% off, however, marginally up. The next three months are usually up because now we go into the next quarter of, of reporting, second real week of um, October at the end of next week is when US reporting sort of kicks off. It's going to be all eyes on. Now, based on what we've seen in the last couple of weeks, keep an eye on the outlook from companies. If they're saying we see it to be bullish, we think mm -hmm. the consumer is in, we think that things are going great, we think that everything is going fantastically, yields will continue to, to go, or he says, <laughs> as, if I'm, as if I know where the 10 years is going, as if anyone does. But we... Yields, yields should continue to pop up because of the stability and there's no landing and that there's no recession, which means that yields go up, which then means that big chunks of the market do come off. So good reporting is actually going to be bad. So pay attention to that. So then that means that if you get good reporting, then this maybe the 1% up month of October may not be so fruitious. However, if you get the company saying, hey, we're seeing some really bad ordinary outlooks that are going on here, yields come off, everything gets a little bit easier. Um, and we get a night similar to similar to sort of last night, I'm going to say, mm. um, potentially maybe with. Although here's the thing, oil then oil then goes up on that sort of weakening because rates come off, but then we, this dog chases its effing tail again around the table. Um, what? There's no way out of that. Actually, I, 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 I'm no. not entirely sure how I do it. That's that, that's in anywhere near, anywhere near certain. Yeah, I mean, look. Uh... But, but actually, the the one thing, though, um, that has happened, and we saw that in the Q2 earnings, is companies have a little bit more certainty with their guidance. We got their uh, record yeah. amount of uh, board guidance uh, given in Q2 since, I think, 2019. So since mm -hmm. the pandemic, because um, everyone remembers that, you know, basically everyone cut their guidance from their, their earnings sheet. So it was too uncertain. We didn't know what was going to happen. And that slowly crept back in. So that's, that's I suppose that's a good thing for markets. We get a little bit more uh you know through the looking glass a, a bit of a future uh, you know look at the future um and like you said i mean if companies are coming going to come through and say the consumer is still really strong then those yields are gonna start keep on spiking and we'll get the first taste of that with pepsi sure. next week pepsi okay. I, I like then... pepsi coke mcdonald's all those staples they get a, they get a real <laughs> good say. look at, <laughs> at the, the u.s consumer and how they're spending and the the, yeah. the the theme has been um, prices have been up because of you know, inflation, but volumes yeah. have have come down a smidge. I think we start to see those vol volumes start to come off a, a lot more uh, whilst prices okay. remain uh, lofty. So right, uh, we got a yeah. minute. We got a minute left here. My producer's yelling at me. All right. Okay. All right, okay. All right, oh, this well, let, um, this chart that's up here shows that uh, any time that there is a rise in bond yields, typically ends with a financial accident. Pay attention to that. Next week, we have David Scott on the podcast. It has been Scuddy. confirmed. Pay attention. Scuddy. Scuddy is in the house. He's very keen to get There's amongst it. Fintwit royalty there. Yeah, Fintwit royalty. Fantastic times. Now, uh, your pick. We've got a minute left. Go. Uh, NFL. Hey, we, 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 got our, we got our pits up, tips up. Mate, we are unbeatable. Yeah, we did. We are unbeatable. We Go. Pies 1 to 39 for myself. Yep. Uh, NFL, yep. Uh, since the AFL is no longer going, NFL. Uh, the Philly Eagles to cover the line at negative four and a half versus the Rams paying a dollar ninety. I like that. The Eagles are on fire. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick the Bears tomorrow in the Thursday night football. The Bears. So time. Wow. Make the Bears to get their first win of the season against the Washington Commanders, but they need points. Give them six and a half. So take it down six and a half. to about to about a buck eighty or something like that. That's all for the show um, that we've got here. A quick one. I'm sorry. We're just gonna get on with our lives and everything. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Sponsored by the Australian Mutual Funds Exchange. Hey, mate, thank you for joining us from HML Investments. Mark, well. Have a good one, guys, and I'll see you next week.
Have a good one. Sorry, bye. Go to bed.